Julie with Julie's Designs. Today is another thriftlet video where I take items I've thrifted and upcycle them for resale. Now today's video, we're going to be doing book sets. I created this book set on one of my live videos and y'all absolutely loved it. I love it too, but y'all wanted a quick step-by-step -step tutorial on how I made this. So we're going to be doing three different book sets, three different ways. This is like a super cheap, easy project because I feel like paperback books is something that's just in abundance at all the thrift stores and they you usually can get them for a really good price. So what you're going to need is some paperback books and you're also going to need to be able to print on a laser jet printer. Now I know not everyone has a laser, laser jet printer, but most of you should have this available to y'all to use at either your local library or I know you can send it to like Office Depot or places like that to get a few pages printed. Now I've been told, I'm just going to tell y'all this because I haven't tried it because I don't have an inkjet printer, but if you do have an inkjet printer, I'm told you can use it. You just need to spray seal the paper after you print it. So like with a Rust-Oleum clear coat or something like that, just to seal the ink in so that it doesn't smudge. So that is also another option. So it doesn't take any talent to do this project. Anyone can do it. I'm telling y'all, it's going to be so easy and fun. So get y'all paperback books and let's go ahead and get started on this project. To prep the books for this project, all you need to do is pull off the harder part of the book, like the book jacket. It usually just comes off pretty simple if you just pull both sides at the same time. If you do have some little colored pieces that end up sticking on, just take your fingernail and kind of just scrape them off. You don't want to leave any of those pieces on because they may show through in the end. So I'm using this vintage bird print. I simply just Googled vintage bird print and found this one, thought it was really pretty printed it to the size I need it, but I will link the description to this particular print in the description below in case you love it and want to use it as well. I thought it would be easier to do this project if I hot glued the books together ahead of time and then it would be easy, easier to handle and they would stay together. So you just wanna glue, put the hot glue and then hold them in place. It doesn't take long for hot glue to dry, but you definitely wanna make sure they stay in the right place. And I'm using Mod Podge in a matte finish. I use a ton of Mod Podge over the Christmas holidays, so I buy it by the gallon, but you can definitely get it in a matte finish in a smaller container if you're just a, just use it every now and then. So I'm just applying a thin layer of Mod Podge. You don't wanna to go too heavy or it'll cause your paper to crinkle. And then I'm gonna take the image and put it on top of my books. Now, these birds, you know, have eyes. So I'm just trying to make sure that I keep the eyes on a hard part and not in the creases of the books. And you have a little time to move stuff around, but once you get it where you want it, you just kind of want to rub it and just kind of get any crinkles out. And then I like to set it the way it needs to go because I could see it was going into one of the cracks too much. So it the Mod Podge does give you a little time to play with it if you have a little bit of a mess up. And then you want to set it aside and let it dry completely. Okay, I wanted to see how a picture would come out. Look, those chubby cheeks, they're so uh, pinchable. Um, so we're going to try it out. I feel like you need an image like this where it's just one person I think would be better and kind of, of a bigger image. This is actually one of my customer's daughters because I wanted to create this book set and be able to give it to somebody. So she doesn't even know about this. So I can't wait to send her a picture of this sweet book set I made for her baby girl. So same thing, you're just gonna put a light layer of Mod Podge on and you also want to be careful, once again, since it is a face, you wanna try as much as possible to get the face into the hard parts of the books and not in the crease. So I find the top crease was a little bit too big, so I decided to add a little more hot glue and push it together. Now I'm ready to put the image onto the book set and like the previous image, you have a little bit of time to play around with it. So make sure you have it in the right spot before you really start pushing down on it. And then once you get it into the perfect spot, you're just going to rub 
all the creases out and you want to just make sure that the Mod Podge is completely dry before you move on to the next step. Okay, on to the next set. So this one is a way to do type on books, super simple. So you can just go in Microsoft Word and type something up and print it out. Now you wanna check the size of your books cause this one, if I've printed it vertical, it didn't fit across the book. So this one I had to print horizontal, that way it fit all, the paper fit all the way across the books. And I'm just cutting it on this little cutting tool that I have. You wanna make sure to cut it larger, not smaller. So that way it covers the whole spine of the book. And then you're just gonna put your Mod Podge on. It's good to have a few of these book sets to work on in a row. That way you're not getting impatient and not letting your Mod Podge dry all, this, uh, all the way. This way you can work on one set and then on to the next one as the Mod Podge dries. All right. You definitely wanna cover up your Mod Podge when you're not using it because it dries quickly. And now we're gonna circle back to the first book set since the Mod Podge is all the way dry. I'm just using an X-Acto knife blade to cut in between the book sets. So if you didn't wait for your Mod Podge to dry, it, this part would tear. It would tear while you were trying to do this. So if you wait for your Mod Podge to dry, it'll give you a nice clean finish. And I'm just kind of pushing the paper into the creases of the books. And then I'm taking the X-Acto knife blade and just cutting the top and cutting the back. And then I find for the size, just using a pair of scissors is much easier. You just wanna get as close as possible to the size as you can. I find on this side, I figured out it's a little bit easier to pull it up a little bit, cut it and then push it back down. It's fine because we are about to put another layer of Mod Podge over it to seal this up. So that'll help hold down any like loose pieces that you have. So you definitely want to push it in the creases and everything and push down your edges. All right, let's do this baby girl now. I was kind of nervous to cut her face and see how it would come out but it ended up coming out perfectly. Oh my God, I'm so excited about this one. So you're just gonna cut the top and the bottom and the edges just like we did the other book. And then the book with the words, you're gonna do the exact same thing. I'm not gonna show y'all that again. I think y'all understand X-Acto knife and scissors work best for this. And then you want to put another layer of Mod Podge over it to seal the paper in and um, seal down any loose edges you might have. And then our books are ready for the next step, the fun part, decorating. Okay, I wanted to show y'all something you could do if you don't like the book pages on top and you don't have, I don't find a lot of pages just have a blank page in there for you to use. So I'm using this Apple Barrel paint, it's called Antique Parchment, and it's like almost the exact color of the pages. And I don't really mind, I like the um, wording on top. So I usually leave it, but I just want to give y'all this option. I just do one light coat where you can kind of see it a little bit, but not too much. And the paint makes it kind of crinkle. So what I do on the next page is I just use Elmer's roll-on glue. And then I just push my page down and that kind of fixes all the issues and it looks absolutely perfect. Now I want to antique the spines of this book. You can totally skip this step if you want, but I just really like the way it looks and I find it just adds a lot of character to the book set. So you're just going to brush on your antiquing wax. You wanna be careful that you're just getting it on the spine of the book and not on the rest, like the book pages and all that. And then you're gonna take your, um, I have a dry paper towel here and I'm just wiping it off. And then usually when I do that, it's still a little bit too, too dark for me. So I like to just go in and dab a baby wipe on it, especially in the middle and kind of leave the edges a little bit darker. So once you wet it, it kind of pulls off more. So it's just kind of personal preference, however you want your book set to look. And then I like to go on the edges and just kind of add a little bit more brown. And then to me, that looks perfect. Okay, back to the other book set that I painted the top. 
I'm feeling like it's a little plain now. So why don't we just stick this little sheep stamp on there? I just feel like that will look perfect. So I'm just using my stays on ink pad and this is a farmhouse stamp from IOD. It comes with a chicken, a, a rabbit, a cow, a sheep. There might be another animal, I don't remember, but I feel like this is a spring book set, so it needs a little sheep. So all you do is you simply put the ink onto the stamp and then you stamp it on, you place the stamp onto whatever you want to stamp. We're doing this book set, it's a flat surface, it's really pretty straightforward. You just put it, push it on there, and then take it off and it just looks so adorable and cute. I think this is perfect. Even though I'm gonna add some twine and some greenery to the top, I still think this sheep is just gonna add like so much cuteness to this piece. Now we are ready to add the finishing touches to our book sets. I love this twine from the Dollar Tree. It's very thin and textured, so I just wrap the book a whole bunch of times because I just love the way this twine looks when you just, you know, wrap it a whole bunch of times. Then I just tie it to the top of the book. You want to do two nice knots to keep it in place. And I love this garland from Hobby Lobby to use for the top of my book sets. It is $16 normally, but you can get it half off. And this stuff lasts a long time. And then I just tie it and put a cute little bow. And then I think this is just the cutest little finishing piece to this book set. This book set, I did not put the antiquing wax on. I just thought it looked perfect as is. And I know my customer is into vintage girl stuff just like I am. So I went in my stash and found lots of girly lace and tulle and fun stuff like that. And I am just tying it to the top of the book. I love this lace trim. I always pick up this kind of stuff when I find in my garage sales because you just never know when you need like little touches of lace here and there. And then these flowers are from Walmart. I just thought the pink and the white would look so good. And I just simply stick them into the knots that I already create, created. And what I'm gonna do is I'm going to hot glue the knot to the book set so that way once this is done everything is in place and i actually ended up going back and adding some lamb's ear because once i kind of stepped away from the book set i felt like it needed a little bit more and that was perfect i cannot wait for y'all to see how this little book set came out all complete and then for the little spring book set with the lamb i I antiqued the spine and added some jute rope and some lavender to the top of that book set it's perfect for spring enjoy today's video I feel like even if you're not a seasoned crafter this is definitely something that you can try and do and I feel like you can succeed it does not take that much talent this is something very easy that anyone can do so I just want y'all to go and try it just don't be scared just try it um, if these are the kind of videos you love make sure you subscribe to my channel I do lots of DIY flips like this one thrift store shopping, thrift store hauls, just all kind of fun stuff like that. I hope y'all have a wonderful day and I will see y'all on the next video. Thanks for watching and give this video a big